Are you posting consistently on Instagram, but don't see much growth in terms of your following or have low or no engagement on your posts? And definitely not seeing that many client inquiries sliding into your DMs? You're not alone. And actually, I might have something that could be a game changer for you. It's something called ideal client personas. And in this video, I will explain all about what they are and how they can help you grow your following, boost engagement, and get new client leads organically without a single cent spent on advertising. But first, I'm glad to have you back. And if this is your first time here, welcome. I'm Simona, and on this channel, I'm combining my experience from both marketing and interior design and sharing how you can grow your design business using social media Media and online marketing. Now, client personas are something very common in the marketing world, but the idea behind them is actually pretty simple, and you can totally use them in your own business without having to be a marketing guru. In short, client personas are an image of the type of client you are trying to attract. You might have also heard them called avatars, buyers personas, or customer profiles, but they all boil down to a description of people who would be the best fit as a client for your business. Client personas can be fairly detailed and include not just descriptions of what your ideal clients are after, but also things like which social media platforms they use, when do they consume social media content, which magazines they read, or even what car they drive. In principle, the more detailed your client persona is, the better you can create content that resonates with them and also know how to serve that content in a way that increases the chances of them actually paying attention to what you are saying. But there is a line to how much detail is helpful and how much is just unnecessary. Let's say if you were a nutritionist, the dietary habits of your ideal client would be a very important information. As an interior designer, you might be interested in this information only if you are remodeling your client's kitchen but knowing how many meals a day they eat won't help you much with getting them to follow you on Instagram. So before you Google client persona templates and just fill out any generic questionnaire, think about which information is actually important for you and your business. Gender, age, household income, or their favorite design styles will be all very relevant for an interior design business. Their favorite brand of cereal or political preferences, not so much. Another thing to mention is that your client persona should be detailed, but it should also represent a specific type of client or a niche you want to serve. Just saying my ideal client is someone who is looking for an interior designer is not enough. Think about who you really want to attract. Is it families, commercial clients, short-term rental owners? Each of those would have a different client persona, as they can be very different in their needs, wishes and preferences. Someone who owns an Airbnb might be a member of Facebook groups that are all about short-term rentals, but might not be a member of mom groups in their area, which could be the case for another type of client who is looking for a designer to remodel their family home. It's a bit like writing your Instagram bio. And by the way, if you haven't watched my video on that, go and watch it after this one. But in short, when writing an optimized bio, you're trying to narrow it down to who exactly you are helping and how. So if you style vacation rentals, you would say something like, I help Airbnb owners maximize their profits through interior design. With client personas, first you narrow down to who exactly you are trying to help or who you are serving with your business. Then expand on who they are as a person to get a picture of their needs, wishes, habits, anything that can help you think more like them. In terms of sources, you can use information from past client questionnaires, you can share polls on your Instagram stories, you could use ChatGPT to help you with your research, you can even use an educated guess if you know your ideal clients well enough. The important thing is that your client persona represents just one type of client, and if you serve various niches or have more types of clients, create separate personas for each type of a client. You've gathered all the information you could find, you filled out all the blanks in the client persona template, you have a pretty good picture of your ideal client, what issues they have, when they are online, which content formats they like to see, and all of that. Now what? The ultimate goal of client personas is to give you a better understanding of your target market, so you can create better content, so that your engagement goes up, your following grows, and you get more client leads on Instagram or Facebook or whatever is the platform of your choice. So once you have your client persona fleshed out, use all that information when creating and planning content. 
For example, if you know what design styles they like, you can create a series of posts talking about a specific style, how to use it in an interior, and show examples of how you used it in past projects. If your ideal client is likely to have pets, you can create content around that. I have two corgis, which is a highly shedding breed, so things like what kind of sofa to choose, or what type of flooring would be best, are highly relevant for me, and would make me stop scrolling and read a post or watch a reel that was addressing these topics. And again, you can also include examples from your past projects and how you address these issues. That's a great non salesy way to promote your business and show that you are an expert without resulting to cheap sounding CTAs. So just to repeat, your client persona should also tell you how they like to consume social media content, which formats they prefer to see, what times of the day they are likely online and what platforms they are likely to be on. So you can use that information to plan and schedule your content to be published in the right place at the right time. It's no use if you create a series of great posts about styling Airbnbs if you share it in a Facebook group for dog owners, or if you schedule your content to be published late in the afternoon, when actually your ideal client is more likely to be scrolling their Instagram feed in the morning after the school run. To get you started, make sure to download our client persona template on the link below. It's a shorter version of a template that is included in our Instagram course for interior designers, where you learn everything you need to know about how to create a comprehensive strategy to get clients on Instagram, including tips for how to stick with your strategy long term, all without having to hire a social media manager or outsourcing your Instagram to a social media agency. But back to our client personas. Their main purpose is to give you a better understanding of who your target audiences, what resonates with them, why and how they are likely to consume content. It's not some magical trick that will bring you new clients out of nowhere, but it can be a very useful tool that can give you that understanding and help you organize what you already know about your target market in one place so you can pull it up and go through all that information whenever you need it. I do recommend that you print out your filled in client persona template and keep it somewhere at hand during your content creation sessions. Of course, you can also keep it just safe in a digital format, either in a Dropbox folder or in a project management software. But I don't know, for some reason I do like to work with pen and paper and something tangible when brainstorming content ideas. So depends on your style, but do have it somewhere you can find it easily and refer back to it when creating your content. If you have any questions about client personas or have any experience using them that you can share, let me know in the comments. And if you want to know how to plan a whole month worth of content in just one sitting, Watch this video next, where I will walk you through my own content planning process.